common question I get asked, particularly by my clients, is whether or not a rear wing will still be effective on their convertible race car even without a roof on. And today in this video, we're going to attempt to investigate and answer this question with the help of a little bit of CFD. Now for this video, uh, I've used a Mazda MX-5 or Miata uh, model. It's the NA model, the, the first generation, and we've run a few different configurations on it. So I've run it with and without rear wings, uh, with and without rear spoilers, and in various combinations of these with the, the convertible roof being on and off and the side windows being up and down. And from these various runs, I've picked out some of the best ones that show how much difference adding or removing a roof makes on rear wing and rear end aero performance. Okay, so let's start off with some numbers analysis of the various runs we've done. So on the left hand side, we've got our absolute deltas, so how much the downforce and drag have changed in terms of their absolute SCX and SCZ, their coefficients. And then on the other side, we have our percentage deltas, which is how much our drag and downforce have changed in terms of percentage values. So our five different deltas that we've got here are our first one is the, the roof removal of keeping the wing on. So we keep the wing on and we take the roof on and off. Next one is removing the roof and the side windows whilst leaving the wing on. Then we have the difference of changing the side windows out, the window removal delta. Then our last two are our reference deltas. So we have the removal of the roof just on the straight car. So no rear wing, no rear spoiler. And then our last delta is removing the roof uh, with a boot lid spoiler, so a low-lying aero device on the rear end. And in terms of sign convention, uh, downforce, more downforce is negative on an absolute delta. So being up here means that we're losing downforce up here and we're gaining downforce down there. If we have a look at our percentage deltas, uh, it's the other way around for downforce. So going down this way means we're losing downforce. And as far as drag goes, going down is reducing the drag of the car on both of these plots and going up is increasing the drag on both of these plots. So if we have a look at our roof removal on our wing cases, we can see that the difference of removing the roof is massive. Now I fitted out this car with a very wide wing on the back of it, much wider than any sane person would put on a, an MX-5. Uh, and you can see that even though my wing is super wide to try and get out of, of any sort of central effects of the cockpit, the downforce loss is massive. We're losing uh, about 0.8 in terms of SCZ, uh, but we are also shedding a little bit of drag. And we'll discuss the mechanism for that a little bit later, uh, but it's largely due to less flow onto the rear wing and less drag from the rear wing itself. Now, whether we, we changed out the side windows or not is a fairly insignificant delta. If we look at the, the window removal delta, we can see it's not much. In fact, if we look at the percentage delta, we're only talking a couple of percent by changing the side windows out. So we can see that the center roof and main canopy is our biggest delta, We're losing about 40% of rear end downforce uh, and also having a drag save of somewhere around the 5% mark. Now, when we have a look at, at the effects of the roof removal on just the straight car as is, uh, it doesn't have huge effects on downforce without the rear wing there. Um, in this particular instance, it's a positive effect on downforce, but I wouldn't read too much into that. Um, but it does make the drag a lot worse. And this is also the same with the spoiler case. Both the, the straight car with no bootlid spoiler and the case with a bootlid spoiler both saw a sizable drag increase. And this drag increase was equivalent to around about 20% of the overall car drag by removing our rear canopy. So you can see that that's not a beneficial thing. When we look at the percentage deltas for the straight car, it's perhaps a little bit misleading on a percentage delta because the straight car with no rear wing is making essentially no downforce. So the, the percentage is a little bit all over the place. In this case, it's the wrong way around because the, the number baseline number is negative. But if we have a look at the spoiler, we can see that we're, we're losing a fair amount uh, of our, our rear downforce potential um, in terms of the, the spoiler's downforce production around about 55%. But again, the spoiler itself is making very small numbers. So overall, what we can determine from these plots is, is that removing the, the roof is having a very large effect on the rear wing. It's having a smaller effect on things like rear spoilers, but the main reason it's having a small effect on that rear spoiler is because our spoiler wasn't super effective in the first place anyway. It's also, generally speaking, a very negative thing for drag. And as a result, you can say pretty much universally that you're not going to want 
an exposed open top convertible car for serious performance track use. Now let's have a bit of a look at the flow fields and see why these effects are occurring. So what we've got here is our rear wing runs on the top and we have our spoiler runs on the bottom. And you can see on the left hand side we have our runs with the roof on and on the right hand side we have our runs with the roof off. And then in terms of what we're, we're looking at, what you're seeing is a, a pressure plot over the, the vehicle's surface of the static pressure on the car and then we have a, a fluid render of the velocity around the vehicle, the air velocity, which will show us where we have regions of low air velocity running into things like wings and stuff like that and causing general havoc and ineffectiveness. When you first have a look at these images, it's fairly obvious to see why the rear wing is getting hammered. You can see that with the roof off, in this particular case, what we've got is a huge amount of low energy air sort of spilling and running along the car and then impacting the rear wing. If we have a look at just this case, you can see that this entire outboard portion here is doing fine, but the center pretty much all the way to the wing stays, which is most of the way out of the bodywork on the car, is engulfed by the losses from the front windshield. It's not that they're spewing particularly high, but the rear wing is not high enough to be in clean air. Now, arguably, you could put this rear wing up significantly higher, and that would help a lot with the problem because then you'd be having clean air flowing to the rear wing. But either way, you're going to be in for a bad time with this much loss headed towards the rear wing. Now, you'll remember that we lost about 40% of the rear downforce on the car. If we have a look at the rear wing, you can see that I've managed to keep a decent amount of the span out of this wake. So in any sort of convertible car, if you can go wider with your rear wing, that's going to help you out. Because if you look from the top, you can see that wake's going to get slowly drawn in towards the back. So the rear wing isn't going to be completely ineffective. It's just going to be far less effective than it would be if you had a clean airflow. Now, when we look at the stock canopy on this particular car, you can see that it's quite a sharp amount of curvature at the back of the roof, and then it's got quite a steep rear windshield, and then it kinks and flattens out. And you can see that, that inherently induces a little bit of loss in this region. Uh, this is one of the reasons why you see things like smooth and fastbacks and stuff like that on MX-5s and Miatas. Uh, it solves this area to an extent. And you'll notice that even on our roofed condition with our rear spoiler down here, that these losses off the back of the roof are still hitting our rear spoiler, regardless of if the roof is on or not. And this is contributing to our general uh, ineffectiveness in terms of the rear spoiler not working super well, uh, even though the, the roof is on. And you can see that when the, the roof is removed, we obviously get worse flow to the rear spoiler, but when you actually have a look at the distribution of losses and which portion of the rear spoiler is seeing clean flow, you'll see that the outboard portion that's getting the clean flow on the spoiler and the bit that's really making the downforce isn't that much worse off in the convertible condition, which is why it's not quite as big a hit as say the giant rear wing, which is getting smashed by this massive lossy area. And this is an explanation for why the spoiler isn't getting hurt as much as the rear wing. If we were heavily loaded on the center portion of the spoiler and we had one of those big stand-up spoilers, we would see a larger difference between these two because particularly as the spoiler got into cleaner air higher up in the, the roof on case, it would be making more downforce. So this low lying spoiler isn't seeing a big difference, but a bigger spoiler, you'd expect to see more of a difference by adding that roof canopy. Either way though, not super effective. A fastback should theoretically make this setup more effective. Now, when we get the fluid out of there, you can see really clearly on the, the surface pressures what's going on. So if we look at our rear wing, we can see on this side, we've got high pressure all over the top surface. On this one, our center is not generating that high pressure because it's getting hit by that low velocity air. You're also getting less pressure recovery on the boot of the car, although you are also getting less suction along the roof. It's when you look underneath the wing that you see the biggest differences though, where this whole center section of the wing is generating almost no load in the roof off case, whereas in the roof off on case, we're generating a ton of load through that central portion. This is one of the reasons why we have the drag reduction with the roof off in our particular case, because we're shedding so much drag off the rear wing because the rear wing's just not making that load and it's not making that rearward bias loading 
that's going to introduce the drag on the rear wing. So we're getting a big drag save on the rear wing when we remove the roof. However, when we look at our spoiled condition, we can see that it's not nearly as big a difference. Again, we have slightly better pressure recovery when we have the flow energy still high from the, the roof and keeping the flow from spilling everywhere. But our pressure on top of our spoiler is not crazy different. It's definitely better with the roof on, but it's not night and day difference. And this really explains some of the numbers that we were seeing earlier. So to wrap up and answer the question, no, having a roof off on a convertible car does not render a rear wing completely ineffective. However, it does result in a significant drop in the effectiveness and efficiency of the rear wing. You should always endeavor to ensure high quality, clean airflow to the rear wing to maximize its performance and maximize overall downforce. Well, that's all for this video analysis of rear wings on convertibles. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and learned a bit from it. If you liked it, don't forget to hit that like button below and subscribe to my channel for more content like this. Leave a comment below on what videos you'd like to see next from me and hopefully I'll see you next time.